Hello, yeah. uh, welcome back to another episode of uh, Beardos Media. We're into episode five already. Alhamdulillah, season four. Today we are discussing the things I do for you. Bit of a wordplay. I like that. Much. How are you, brother? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. How are you? Alhamdulillah. You know, this is a this is an interesting topic because this 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 particular topic can take us in all sorts of different directions. But it's something I think everybody has observed throughout their lives. At least those who pay attention to those people who may have gone through situations where they've felt, with hindsight, in particular, mm. that their minds were made up about things or people based on other people's opinions, ideas, and minds yeah everybody over the age of 4 cuz yeah you expect this in sort of an- yeah and you know what it's 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 usually you think about it and and you think about well yeah school days you have the popular person in school or in your class or in your f- circle of friends <clears throat> the person who is most outwardly spoken or who has the most uh, you know that wow factor or somebody who has that kind of stature within the circle you know they're like your thought influencers they're the people who kind of shape the way you think so whoever generally whether it's when school days it's going to be peers around you or as you grow in mature it's going to be people who are around you um like teachers or whatever um and then you think about the business world and mentors or people who are popular in the business world and then you think mm. about the community when you go even, when you become even more mature because i i've realized this as time's gone on there's an evolution of your personality from when you're kids you grow into adulthood and then you grow into your 30s and your 40s and you know in when you get to that stage your mindset isn't restricted to just your little nucleus of friends or family you start becoming more concerned about the things why you know around you in a more wider sense right mm, absolutely so yeah. i mean it's happened to me i've been guilty of it i have had my opinions uh, influenced or shaped about people based on other people's opinion who i have held maybe i've had trust in them maybe you know i've trusted their judgment on things maybe i've i've held them in high regard and for whatever reason that might be for all sorts of reasons your opinions on people are somewhat influenced by those people who are more whether it's they're stronger than you or more influential than you or louder. more louder Did, than have you noticed that you know you go th- you go through a certain phase in life and i'm going to say school years early infant years mm. the loudest person in the room is the most is the truth yeah you know? yeah you grow out of that don't you Vo- volume speaks conviction yeah so nice. I, mean, I, nice. I should quote that actually like it reminds me of a quote that i i threw out a, a couple of years ago just because someone speaks with conviction doesn't mean they speak the truth. the truth um and and you find that a lot of the times whether it's it's in your working environment whether it's in your family in your household whether it's in your business environment whether it's in your i don't know community those who speak the loudest with conviction mm. sound more trustworthy and they sound like you know what yeah i should believe them and 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 one of the problems there is because people don't challenge them yeah when people aren't challenged that's that's another reason why people tend to believe them and think that hang on if no one's challenging them mm. everybody else must be thinking the same am i in the minority about shut up see this is this is where the, anybody can then get brave and then add you know a bit of tax bit of vat bit of masala shala you can just add another 10 20% can't you yeah and 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 we see this with often we see this with people um with positions of power you know yeah. politicians yeah councillors mps prime mm. ministers presidents all the way to the top and mm. then all the way to the bottom mm. is if somebody and and we see it with um charlatans what do you call them like beers and priests and you know all these kind of people yeah is when they're getting away charlatans is that the right word is it the right word i don't know you know <laughs> you love to let us know that one but when they can get away with so so then they think you know maybe i can just take it up a notch and that's when they do don't they there are a lot of people out there who who do take it up a notch they they abuse their uh their powers and their positions 
to to either gain something that they want yeah or influence the minds and opinions of the masses mm. and there's a skill in that there's definitely a skill in that i mean somebody once once said you know something to do with narcissists that you know narcissists are like that they they will have you know a lot of conviction in what they say they can never be wrong themselves and i think a part of this conversation is some of the things that from my experience or your experience or even the experience of the people who are watching and listening right now it would be interesting to to get some feedback on this and and in terms of what you have observed in terms of people who have had that influence over maybe you in the past or your thoughts or your thinking i want to know what you know uh, you know what are the kinds of traits you've seen in people which should start to ring alarm bells yeah. because in my experience I've, i you know i i alhamdulillah I've, i've traveled quite well i've met different people from dem- different demographics worked in different environments and i've seen a big variety of personalities and and you know partially coming from an nlp uh, background but also something that i've been quite observant of without the nlp you know people who haven't done nlp will will pick up on certain things from people mm. where they think hang on you know what this person did this or said this or did it in this way it's not always about what they say but how they say it and then and then that influences you as well so w- one of the things one of the first things for example in my mind is that when somebody when somebody is always talking about other people to you mm. that's the first alarm bell yeah because no doubt they'll be talking about you to to, to other people yeah of course i have um you know unless obviously you have a, a close circle of friends who you might share ideas and share opinions with about certain things that's different mm. but generally speaking if someone is comfortable with sharing their opinions with you about other people there's a question yeah why are they sharing it with me yeah and then what are they sharing about me and what they're sharing about especially me? if it's if it's like a circle of friends and then one friend will want to talk about another friend but not in the circle like on the sidelines you know what you know what the funny thing is they'll all say listen i'm going to tell you something but only i don't tell, tell you the care yeah right you know only you know and just keep it between us and i'll tell about 10 or 15 other people saying exactly same the same thing, thing same script yeah same script and i think that that's it's okay to do that yeah I've I've come across situations um by the way Shahana uh, yeah Shahanara says narcissist conviction or delusion it's a good question it is is it conviction or delusion i think they they overlap sometimes their delusions they they can they have conviction in their own delusional mm. thoughts i think the first person that they uh, convinces themselves isn't it yeah this is why they can't be wrong yeah they can't be wrong i mean i'm not a specialist in narcissism and you know i've come across the term i've studied briefly but you know i'm not a psychotherapist or anything like that uh a narcissist is very different to a liar you know a liar is somebody who knows that they're either stretching the truth or misrepresenting the truth or just downright fantasizing completely but they know mm I would say a narcissist has got something or the other up here which doesn't connect the wires that remind them that what they're saying or their account of something or version of something didn't actually happen is not actually real or true. Yeah, but they don't have any remorse either. No. Narcissists don't have any sense gonna, of remorse. If, if they, they don't have any feelings. If they've lost that sense of you know their sort of fantasy from reality mm. then why would they if they've convinced themselves that they're truthful and they're right and their recollection of events is accurate and they have all the facts why would they why would they have remorse you know what's really worrying though what's what, what's really worrying is how people in general unless they've experienced something like this can be very gullible and trusting of people mm to some degree it's excusable when you've when you're inexperienced in life and you've not been through that before so you you don't you know you're not the wiser about what people are capable of mm. but there are people out there especially the vulnerable people people who are maybe uh not so strong minded or 
independent in their thinking mm. and they rely on certain individuals and their thoughts are shaped by that individual's thought but the the the, the danger isn't just about the individual being shaped in the way they think because of uh, what they've been told the danger is the evil in the people who influence them knowing what they're telling them will be taken for gospel as gospel mm. and they do that without responsibility everybody has a, 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 a form of responsibility and you know we need to be responsible for our actions and our words and sometimes we're responsible for the things we don't say so mm. it's not it's not mm. just about taking action or speaking up we are also responsible for the things we don't say mm. and a lot of people forget the omissions part actions and omissions people just blame and lay the finger on point the finger at people who say stuff or do stuff but they don't often think about people who don't say anything mm. when they should yes yeah i agree that's a valid point actually how much freedom of thought do you think is really out there for the average person you know why it's it's hard to say isn't it i think we all like the idea of freedoms and freedom of thought and all that kind of stuff but when it when it really comes to the crux of the matter all our thoughts are always going to be influenced by something we've read we've seen we've watched we've heard you know through our senses we're going to be our minds going to be conjuring up and weighing all the different opinions and ideas our life has thrown at us things that we've looked at actively things that we've that we've, we've absorbed subconsciously unconsciously and it's going to be a concoction of all those things i think everybody has that freedom of thought to that level the question isn't whether people have freedom of thought the question is how much of their thought do they really feel is exercised in their you know with their own freedom and their free thought mm. their own assessment an independent assessment it's hard to be objective about certain things when you're you're being drilled uh, with ideas or thoughts and opinions from somebody who's more i don't know powerful than you influential than you stronger than you and you know all those kinds of things and it's you know and 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 when your mind is still developing it's much more difficult to make your own mind up about things because you're always looking for advice mm. you're always looking for somebody who's you know even, not even consciously sometimes you know unless you're a real rebel if you're a real rebel you know you'll just do whatever you want to do anyway you don't you're not going to give a crap about what other people think but most of the times if you're if you're conscious of your actions and you want to do the right thing then you know you're going to be looking for advice and the problem is you're not always going to be turning towards people who are knowledgeable competent qualified to give you that advice mm. they may seem like it because they talk the talk because they talk the talk mm. Yeah that that's a, such a good point actually but by that time you you're going through whatever you're going through that have you really stopped to analyze how qualified this person is you know how whether they can give advice whether i can take their advice cuz we spoke about this a few weeks ago do you remember the difference um the our discussion on the difference between coaches and, and mentors and mentors mm. um and that was the first time probably i've had it laid out for me like that that a coach um is the one who asks the question the right question yes yeah. whereas a mentor will say guides you and tells a bit of accountability yeah. do this do that do this do that and i think when it comes to advice etc or counseling or you know these kind of things it's not for that person to be mentoring you do you know what i mean yeah you see the difference if if you've gone to somebody um for advice or counseling or just to kind of i don't know maybe pull your heart out <clears throat> it's it's really their job is to listen to you and to help you process what you're saying and in turn will help you process what you're thinking and feeling do you remember when i said that one of the pr- uh the 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 conditions for coaching is that the one of the prerequisites is that you have to be in a resourceful state of mind yourself Yeah. If you're a coach, mm. 
and you're going to coach somebody. You can't coach somebody effectively unless you're in a resourceful state of mind yourself. And that that applies to any kind of therapist, whether it's a counselor, somebody who you seek for counsel. If that counselor, that person is not in a resourceful state of mind themselves, mm. they should know. They have that responsibility to understand I'm not in the resourceful state of mind myself to be counseling somebody, so I should give them uh alternative advice or signpost them somewhere else because yeah. you're not going to be sincere or genuine if you're messed up in the head yourself and you're being asked to help somebody else who requires any kind of help that applies to coaches counselors mentors whoever who is in a therapy based type of uh, uh, a role and so yeah of course now the problem here is most people find it difficult to turn people away away for different reasons some have very good intentions they'll say well i don't want to say no to this person this person's gone through a lot or this person's suffering or this person's vulnerable or whatever but this is where emotional intelligence comes into play you have to put your in, you know emotions mm. to a side sometimes and think about this for them not just yourself because when you're thinking of yourself doing everything for everybody you're not going to be any good to any one body do you know what i mean sure. if if you're spreading yourself that thinly and you're not let's just say you know well yourself let's just say you've got i don't know you're going through anxiety or depression or you know any mental health issues yourself then you're not you shouldn't be putting yourself or that person in that position where you're advising them to do anything i mean it's negligence isn't it, it, it yeah it, it, it can yeah it can backfire it can it can make things worse um in 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 the general sense i would say as a rule of thumb anybody who is in a in a position where they're providing any kind of support therapy of any kind uh or guidance they should not be guiding anybody unless they're in the right state of mind themselves mm. if they're not then they're put in somebody's life at danger literally yeah literally so, that's how bad it can be do you think as as a, it's as a basic sort of human emotion it's we we find it difficult to maybe turn somebody away or even redirect them or you know um rechannel them towards maybe a better option or a better yeah, solution are, for them yeah there are different angles to this aren't there there can be some people who you would feel guilty for turning away because they have a certain relationship with you and you don't want to seem like you're being insensitive by turning them away or directing them somewhere else so if it's for example a family member or a close relative or a friend who's come to you for support and you know emotional support or help or guidance and you're telling them look I'm not in the right frame of mind to do anything mm-hmm. you need to go somewhere else um then they might take it like you know this guy's fobbing me off or this girl's fobbing yeah. me off so there's a risk there um but if there if it's even in that situation if these people are close and you want to help them then i would suggest being open about your own um deficiencies in that moment in time to be able to help them and that openness and transparency would be far more appreciated than you know you mm. you trying to dive in and making a mess of something that's already you know uh, hanging on a thread and and i think how often do we see that whether it's family um extended family whether it's sort of friend circles or networks or whatever is that one family member has gone to another family member in in all in good faith in trust everything but the family member that they've gone to or confided in isn't as biased as one may like to think you know they've not um seen the situation from a neutral perspective mm. hence everything that they say all their advice all their guidance it's already biased you know they've kind of picked a side in this whether they premeditated it or well, yeah it's called conflict of interest conflict of interest so whenever you have a situation where somebody has asked for you you know your advice or your opinion or you know uh, mediation and this is how, i mean i put a post up a few days ago i had three situations mm. prop up 
in you know people asking me three different circumstances in the last couple of weeks where people have asked me to mediate between two parties okay mm. and none of them in in any of those situations in all three of those situations it didn't involve that person who's asking me they were divulging information to me they already had made their minds up about certain things about what people had said or done and who was in the wrong and who was in the right and as a rule of thumb as a mediator Mm. Or as somebody who's going to be getting involved with uh, dispute, dispute uh, resolution or conflict, uh, 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 or what's that term again? Um, uh, um, dispute resolution, right? Um, you have to be as independent as possible. Mm. You can't already come to a conclusion, especially when you've only spoken to one side of the of the of, of the you know. Um, the parties of the two parties mm. and i've always said this there are always three t- three sides to an argument one which one side will say two which the other side will say and the third which what actually happened because right. there's always going to be some discrepancy between the other two sides yeah like it or not nine out nine out ten times unless they're really mockless and yeah you know, i mean if um, you've got if you've got two people who are both telling 100 percent the truth and representing the situation 100 percent accurately then do you even need a mediator? Do you know? Do you? Yeah. Look, the thing is, in any situation, whenever you have that kind of, well, whenever you have a conflict, you can't mediate between parties who don't want to be mediated uh, for. Mm. You have to have the consent of both parties, or however many parties there are, for them to explicitly say yes. I trust this person to come in and be uh, act independently and fairly fairness is going to be a, 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 you know top of the agenda because mm. if there is no fairness and you're not going to be independent where's the justice in that you've got to have just people to do the right thing mm. so if you've not even spoken to one side and you've already made your mind up based on another side i mean who knows that one side that you've spoken to might actually be right Could be. might actually hold all the facts and that's enough for them you know, uh, to make their, their uh, base their opinion on as long as they've got the other side. The side point is, you're not to know, isn't it? You're, you're not to yeah, know. Yeah, 100%, 100%. You know, let me tell you something. This is really, this is going to be, this will be really interesting because I've rarely shared this. I've been asked to mediate in marital problems since the age of 17. I was 17 years old and I used to, and I, and I when I was still uh, just finishing a levels and i remember this because it, it, it was, i was quite new in driving i'd passed my test when i was 17 years old and i'd got a car and I, and there was a couple in birmingham very close friends of the family um who had lots of tiffs and issues and they they actually called me both parties were okay to call me to come and help them out to to sort each other out basically right now at the time i didn't know what i was doing I, wasn't 17, it. I was seventeen. You just want to drive your car. <laughs> That's exactly why I went initially. Um, <laughs> but no, in seriousness, I was seventeen years old. But I tell you what, that experience did to me. That experience, because at the time I was only it was only for me a case of, come on, don't do that. Come on, you don't do that. Don't be silly. You know, it was one of those kind of mediation. It wasn't mediation. It was like patch up, make up, you know, and all yeah. that. These were a married couple with kids. Yeah, for me it was just a case of patch up, make up, right? And I was like trying to convince them both. As time went on, I was at university and the same thing started happening again. And, you know, there were, I, I suppose you could call, you know, almost like an agony uncle type of a role. You know, amongst the circle of people who I knew, they used yeah. to always go, yeah, go and get, go and get him. He'll, he'll, he'll sort it out. And I'd, I had that kind of a role within the communities or the friends that I, that I knew. And as time's gone on, that's happened more and more over time. Uh, and, and it's happened more and more uh in terms of more complex situations in which i've had to kind of i've had to force myself into try to be try to be objective in the way i look at things mm. and sometimes you've got to just ignore the emotional outburst and cries of the person who is um claiming that the other person has wronged them because you have to look at the, you know it's difficult to do that it's not easy looking beyond the emotional outcries mm. uh, and then acting fairly justly by listening to both sides without 
letting the emotions and the and the tears kind of influence your decision it's easy to drop everything and say yeah look what you've done you've made her cry yeah do you know what i mean yeah look what you've done you know she's she's thinking all sorts here now do you know what i mean mm. it's easy to do that it's easy i mean some people have crocodile cra- crocodile tears and you don't know whether they're being genuine or not it's 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 so easy so it's it's more difficult to be independent in your thinking independent in your assessment and any therapist will tell you that being independent in that kind of uh, a situation conflict conflict um, uh, uh, in, in this situation of conflict is 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 of utmost importance paramount importance mm-hmm. so yeah I, i i've been doing this since the age of 17 but one one of the things that quickly i became aware of was number one independence number two don't fall for the emotional uh, outcries and the, the the outbursts um and number three listen to all sides objectively yeah number four stick with the facts yeah because it's easy to be swayed by theories opinions misconceptions i thought you did this i thought you meant that no what did you say what did he say what did you do what did he do and what did he mean what did you mean sometimes it's a case of just genuine miscommunication mm-hmm. sometimes things are going to be misinterpreted right and this is where we, we we think about a lot of the times when people have arguments and um you know they they they, they get at each other's throats for what may be presumed as you know menial things nlp we, we refer to big chunk thinkers and small chunk thinkers like people who have just different way of thinking and how to process stuff it's easy to do that it's easy to just kind of fall apart from somebody just because they think or process things differently some people are more more uh um focused on the, the the minute details of arrangements and some people aren't some people are focused they're not focused on minute details they just look at the bigger picture mm. neither are wrong they're just different different yeah and people don't get that people get frustrated with each other and this is why even when you have relationships people are frustrated with each other just because somebody's not uh, you know one person might be a big chunk thinker you know and the other person might like the details the finer details and they just can't see each other's way of doing things and that unfortunately results in arguments fights and all sorts of stuff yeah see there's there's so much to unpack there that look first of all there's the naivety let's say me and you don't get on for whatever reason or we're not you know some kind of fallout call mm. it love is tiff call mm. it whatever yeah um i would be naive to go to somebody to go to maybe one of your friends whether i go to one of your friends or whether i go to somebody who doesn't like you mm. either way it's naive on my part because i know that person is from your circle whether it's your circle of lovers or haters or whatever mm. it's it doesn't make sense it's a it's an ill thought out move from my part but then secondly unless that person has a reputation for being just this is the thing that was my second point is that that's where experience and professionalism would really come into question of the person mm. that's been asked to you know intervene or mediate or resolve because whoever i go to if they're not professional and they're not experienced and they're not of that level of integrity what, what what's what's professional and experience this is a matter of perception yeah so yeah if, uh, if i go to somebody me and you've had a fight mm. forget who's right forget who's wrong mm. yeah if i've got approached somebody and that person isn't doesn't have those qualities or you know character traits they're going to be a, they might find themselves somewhat biased towards me because i've mm. given them the respect or the authority or that kind of stature mm. i've gone to them mm. so they're naturally you know um without those without justice they're going to lean towards me mm. that's a problem straight away mm. but i'm so wound up in my own thoughts i'm not to see that the person who's perhaps less than professional or perhaps less than you know any of these things is also boosted 
because oh he's come to me so you know I've got to kind of look out for him and I've do you see what I mean mm. there's so many issues in all of this and I think we see this quite often in in family in friends in social circles um and I think we one thing that we've lost in communities now is people of that standing like in for example we're in you know Burton or a part of Burton or whatever mm. I mean I've lived here a long time I don't particularly know of any clear cut names of people oh yeah any issues or any resolutions the people of Burton go to this person mm. And I'm sure it, it wasn't always like that As societies or communities or tribes or villages I'm sure there was a time where, where we had that under wraps mm. there, uh, there's, is, there's two things with that Number one, back in them days When there were people of that standing Number one, they were people of ethics and morals yeah. And they didn't, they didn't take shit from anybody they said it how it is, how they saw it to be true. That's their truth. Mm. Whether you liked it, whether it's right or wrong, they had conviction and, and that they had those ethics and morals. Number two, they were given respect by respectable members of the community. That's the difference. Isn't it? That's yeah. the difference. And they were given that respect by people who didn't have shots to fire against anybody who might they might see as competitors. Nowadays, everybody wants to be that community leader. Everybody wants to have that, that status in community societies and the titles and the names plastered over us. Somebody asked me just the other day, why don't you take on this you know, role and stuff? It's for something I was volunteering for. I said, no, I, you know, this titles don't do it for me. Mm -hmm. I like the work that I'm doing. If, if there was a need for something more or beyond what I'm doing, I'll do it. But I don't want the title. I don't want that responsibility. I don't want the, you know, the, the, I don't want those spotlights uh, mm -hmm. on me just for the sake of having a title, right? I've had titles before. They don't mean anything. If you're sincere, you'll do what you have to do without seeking recognition uh, and uh, rewards and awards and stuff for it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? There are lots of unsung heroes out there who do work. I mean, people like in our humanity unites our soup kitchen. Mm. There are lots of people who do have uh, a lot of, um, uh, they spend a lot of time with us. They spend, you know, Sahil and Sharon, these are two people who I have a lot of respect for. They, they go out of the way every single Sunday. They'll go out and, you know, they'll organize everything. Yeah, we all set it up as friends. Mm. We're all supporting in different ways. But the, the Sahil in particular, who I've seen on Sharon, they, you know, no matter what happens, unless mm. there's something that they've organized with the family and the, you know, they have to be somewhere else, they will always go out of their way to make sure that the events are running properly, even on the days that they're not running events. I mean, I've covered mm. Sahil so many times and he's saying, Maj, do you need anything else for this Sunday? Everything in order? Is there anything that I need to pick up from anywhere? Yeah. That kind of guy. He's never he's never put out put himself forward for any award. I mean, I'm always bigging him up because he deserves it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's those types of people, and there are those types of people. You know, there's a saying in Punjabi, "Khodi apart and nikli chua." Right? It, basically, in English, for those of you who don't know, it means that you you know you you dig out the whole mountain, and underneath it, you only find a little mouse. Yeah. You know, it's 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 a comparative thing, isn't it? You know. <laughs> There's another there's another saying Piddi Niki Pataka Vada. So <laughs> Okay. Uh, I think for, for, card, for, the, for, for the Punjabis they'll understand what I'm uh, what I'm referring to. There are people who make a lot of noise, but they're full of hot air. Somebody once said to me, empty barrels make louder noise. Um, you know, it, it they would do <laughs> <laughs> Little to nothing But they'll make Such a big deal out of it They just mm. want the awards They want emblems As long as their name is on it Their tag the is on it Their kind on of recognition yeah. well, Otherwise they won't even do it Shonara says From my experience In working as a mediator Many moons ago It's so important That people seek someone Who is neutral To both parties 
one of the points I'll add to, to what you've both already mentioned is that boundaries may be blurred by the parties or the mediator themselves. Conflict resolution training helps you to work on techniques to help both parties and common ground as well as on your own emotions so mediators remain professional however emotional the clients become 100%. 100 percent mm. and that's exactly you know what i was referring to about obviously shahnar has articulated that much better than i did um and that independence is what's going to give you the objective route to follow mm. do you know what i mean otherwise you either way you're going to be you're going to be siding one person or the other one way or the other yeah yeah so i think that does more harm than it does good of course without a doubt look you can't have somebody mediating who's not going to is not going to be just mediation is to is is the whole point of mediating is so that you arrive to a conclusion which is fair and just mm. yeah if you're going to be one sided where's the justice in that where's the fairness in that and to you know what's worse there are people out there who will justify their conclusions to everybody except for the people who are involved in the situation and add masala to it by making up stories and they're not they're not the right people mm. to ask to mediate in stuff the problem you have is some people have nothing else going on in their lives so they need that validation by making loud noises and throwing you know uh, pointing fingers at people and I did this I did that I did this know. and I did that to to big themselves up mm. it's almost as if they're building some kind of cv or portfolio for themselves isn't it but you know what a real somebody with that warranted standing in any community or society will know a fourth person will never know mm. if i've gone to the right person to resolve mine and your issue mm. nobody else will ever come to know about it 100% particularly this, not from the person that I've gone to yeah and this is this is why i put that post up a few days ago about um people who 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 go around telling other people stuff you know backbiting and slandering and stuff and i based that on all three of the situations that i came across in the last two weeks mm. none of the in any of those three situations none of them required me to know the names of people because none of those people the grieved parties had been consulted i shouldn't know mm. do you know what i mean and then if i'm if i'm going to go around oh yeah leave it i was i was going to get <laughs> heated up about that one because it reminded me of so many conversations i've had in the last week or so and messages that that have been sent to me about oh if that's about me then you yourself are in the wrong because you know you didn't get the facts uh it's like you know what <laughs> you point a finger at so one and three are pointing three back, are back at, at you, you know yeah. what i mean is that kind of a scenario and I, I didn't even respond to some of these comments or messages because i thought you know what there's no point mm. because you're not going to change people's minds some people can never be wrong and this is one of you But know if there was that sincerity then you could change people's minds you know somebody who's sincere and truthful and honest and wanting to do the best thing you know there's a difference between having a clear conscience and just convincing yourself otherwise if you've got a clear conscience you never shy away from the fact that you may have been mistaken misguided miscalculated you know misinformed miss anything your your conclusions could actually be bang on yeah but if your approach is wrong you've done more harm than good yes your conclusions about these things can be bang on and coming back to the actual you know the overall discussion that we're having here about thinking for yourself this applies in 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 both camps on the side on which people are seeking remedial i don't know whatever it might be remedies of some kind or you know uh counseling and the side of the people who are providing the counseling on in both camps mm. people need to be independent in their thinking and you know what there's always have you seen that analogy of somebody writing a 6 on the floor 
if you're standing opposite saying the, the six and the nine yeah the six, on, from your side it looks like a nine from my side it looks like a six reverse right but yeah, we've seen it from right. different angles yeah only yesterday and the day before in fact today as well somebody has been in contact with me asking me because you know you hear about a lot of these female w- women's movements mm. um women empowerment protecting women's rights uh making sure women aren't hard done by as they should you know i'm all up for that yeah but somewhere along the line this particular woman who came co- in contact with me she said there's there's an imbalance particularly when it comes to fathers not winning the rights of seeing their children in a dispute when there's a marital dispute so if there's a separation between a husband and wife or father and mother if they're not married there happens to be a big disparity an imbalance in how the court or i don't even know if it is the law but possibly the law favors the mother over the father and it's drawn men towards taking their own lives and depression yeah and there's a there's a big imbalance yeah there is yeah so it's like anything when you are when you are fighting for the rights of people you can't have it one way you can't just fight for the right of one person or one kind of people mm. and ignore the others and leave them be or let them rot you have to fight the rights yeah, of both if you, if you want justice or you know it's often referred to as equality um and you want to fight to get up to 50% of a certain certain right in a certain criteria or you know mm. but then there's another um area where you've got 70 80% mm. of the right or the standing or the power and you're not willing to reduce on that side mm. then your equality argument is out the window isn't it's it it's out of the window is the equality argument is out of the window but as a person who feels or they feel that they are of good character and good standing they need to be show, showing that they are fighting for both rights yeah. you can't fight for the rights of people and just fight for the one side mm. where there's an injustice taking place for the other side you've got to be fair and just and say actually no that's wrong as well yeah and you don't yeah. really see that i'll be honest and, and it's funny you mention that because there's we're all adults we're all on social media right we all see one particular gender rant a little bit more than the other about rant okay yeah about absent That's controversial for you baby daddies or whatever yeah oh okay okay oh. all right you know what women are worse for it okay i said it there you go um but i read some of these posts and i and they'll be on a rant you know what bent rib all that i get it but some of the things that they say mm. um oh he wants to turn up after a week and he wants to see the child and he wants to take him out no where has he been where was where was he on this day where was he on that day and and just i'm not going to let him i'm not going to do this if he thinks he can just walk in and out and i think and you try to you read between the lines and you think basically she's denying the father the right to see his child Yeah because you know I don't know if he was unable to make a different day or he was unable to I don't know financially support as much as maybe she would have liked whatever the reasons I I now have you know I have this subconscious thing where I flip it mm. and I imagine that was a man putting a mother through that keeping a mother mm. away from her child mm. and honestly ever since I've started flipping it it breaks my heart and this is what this particular uh, sister was referring to she's saying that there's not enough emphasis on that in terms of the other side like the apparently in these uh, um court cases and the, the fighting for the rights of um these parents it, it just so happens that the fathers are worse off the left mm. worse off so who just mentioned a really important point actually uh about uh being in uh, being um just he says probably not the right time to mention this actually so hold this is the right time to mention this probably not that the right time to mention this but this is like sticking up for ukraine and not speaking up for the palestinian people my brother absolutely bang on absolutely bang on this is double standards isn't it mm. that's what it comes down to it comes down to double standards and if you're just you will fight for justice no matter what 
you're not going to be biased. Justice does not allow any kinds of biases or prejudices mm. to come in play. You're just just. Just, just. Just. I don't just. know if you could quote that. Like, is it? Is it oh, I don't know. You'd have to probably, probably put some context around it. Yeah, you can have a t-shirt that just said just, just. Just, just. Yeah, <laughs> not, not just with a Nike tick on it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> but no, true. I, I think uh, Baizun makes actually a, a really good point. There, there is a lot of double standards and it makes me think, not even think, realise how much a, of a lack of justice there is in the world. It's just, you know what, it is a lack of justice It's not fair There's, you know, talk about equality this and fairness that And humanity this If justice is lacking What do you really have? Yeah, and you know what, this is why a lot of people get Even from amongst the Muslim community They, they misinterpret things They say Islam means equal, there is equality is, is, Islam is equality No Islam is not based on equality It's based on justice Yeah What's just? It's not equality Because you can't have You can't have Complete equality in everything if, Well, in Islam we don't We have We're just <laughs> And it wouldn't work It wouldn't it, work Imagine yeah. And I think, you know what I so you mention, are you, let, me, let me guess, let me guess Are you going to Are you going to mention the uh, boxing analogy put, put a man and a woman in a boxing ring together I wasn't, but I would would I love to see that? No, that would be, be a bit barbaric. Let's not do that. But I was actually going to bring up um, uh, a podcast that we've done in a previous season um, about f- femininity. Is femininity a word? Yeah. Femininity and masculinity. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and how you can be 50-50. Or you can be fi- men can be feminine and m- women can be masculine, masculine. And, you know, there's just no... It's equal opportunity. You can be whatever you want to be. Anything goes. A- anything. Go- well, that's, you know, we could give so many examples on this whole LGBT. And I don't know what letters have been added this week, but I'm sure there is one. Um, you're right. I- Islam is about justice. It's not about equality. I- I've not heard anywhere. Um, I'm not familiar with men and women being the same or being equal or being, you know. Um, but that's, that's because you may have learned a little bit about that. You know what's ironic though? A lot of the times when people um, are in that position where they've been a- approached to help somebody out or provide counselling or guidance or whatever, they may have a Muslim identity and they may, may claim that they're doing, because it's Islamically, this is wrong, you shouldn't be doing this and we need to fight against this and all that kind of stuff. Sadly, they're, a lot of those people are the ones who I've noticed, they're not very learned in Islam themselves mm. they want to be the leaders within the community but they don't possess the attributes of muslim leaders they're probably more familiar with tupac lyrics and they'll quote it as some kind of gospel or, or bollywood know. yeah they if, probably, if it's, if it's they, only they are, god can judge me brigade they they will know more about uh bollywood lollywood hollywood celebrities and the lifestyles and their cats dogs names and mm. and uh, who they had an affair with and all that kind of stuff then the names of prophets and the sahabas it's these is these and then and then they say that oh islamically this is wrong like they had the qadis mm. and then the mujaddids of islam of of this time and and they they're making the rules of what islam they've misinterpreted mm. the, the you know the islamic uh, notions of, of of justice and what it means uh, you know what i posted that hadith regarding yeah. What backbiting and slander means Like there's mm-hmm. a hadith where the prophet was asked You know about uh, backbiting And and, uh, and um, uh, Not to entertain and, and I'm paraphrasing here obviously and, and, and one of the companions Asked what about if it's true And they said well if it's true It's back uh, If it's true It's backbiting It's still backbiting If it's not true it's slander So in either case It's not permissible Mm. So Kamrat, I'm sorry, Jens just uh, tuned in So trying to pick up the conversation Not many people can execute justice based on truth Truth nowadays is standing up for your own benefit and agenda <laughs> Very true uh, He continues to say Leaders nowadays won't uh, want to stand on both sides of the fence Because they look for a future opportunity not wasted A lot of people won't stand on huck 100% True Yeah 
کامران خان صاحب کافی دیر بعد اکلا نہیں گال کیتے جی <laughs> There's no shame. First of all, there is no shame. You are the bigger person if you seek help and advice. Number one. Number two, get your advice and seek counseling or, you know, whatever is mentoring or coaching or guidance from competent people. People who are, and I'll use this word loosely, qualified uh, to... to guide you and people who will give you independent uh, advice now how do you find them ask around but don't just start confiding with you know your your uh, deepest darkest secrets um with anyone and everybody the re- recipients of people uh, the recipients of information i think it's equally important if you're getting information and you're being influenced by people of a certain standing within the community or the business world or your workplace critique things mm-hmm. learn to question stuff and just as is there's no shame in reaching out for help there's no shame in asking questions if you're looking to do the right thing and asking the questions the right questions is of utmost importance whenever you're in any environment to find out whether this person actually has the credentials to help me. Now, if that person starts, starts on a rant because you asked them for their credentials, mm. then you've got your answer. <laughs> yeah. Right? Wrong number, yeah. <laughs> yeah, wrong number. <laughs> yeah. Um, if, uh, what's, what's that movie called again? Be, uh, it's an Amar Khan movie. Uh, where they, they go around talking about you know these beards and, uh, and and saints and you know who charge money oh and, PK and, and PK that's PK. it if anybody hasn't watched the movie worth watching that movie ask the right questions and ask the questions confidently uh, and you know what if, if the person can't give you don't, don't go by oh I, oh I help this person and I help that person I, I know this person that doesn't mean anything mm-hmm. in the grand scheme of things that doesn't mean anything yeah Knowing people doesn't mean anything. Helping, saying you've helped somebody doesn't mean anything. Only the results speak whether you, you actually help them. To be fair, in reality, if, if, you're, if you're genuine enough, you would never reel off um, a list of people that you've helped. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that, that should actually start ringing alarm bells. It's not mentioning names, yeah. isn't it? Um, oh, I did if, this, I did that. I'm, I'm involved in this. I resolved this. No. No. Because what's going to happen is, Your situation, one way or another, whether they resolve it or not, it's going to pass. It's going to come to pass. But you're just going to be another notch on their belt. You're forever going to be spoken about, you know? Yeah. It, all in all, you're making this person more notorious or more well-known, whatever, when really, it's it's the opposite, you know? Wow. Zaf, uh, Salaam alaikum, brother Zaf, hope you're well. He said, um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, He who is two-faced in this world will have two tongues of fire on the day of resurrection. Oof. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, there are a lot of warning signs for us, especially people of, uh, of faith, uh, whether you're Christian, you know, you follow the Judaism, Islam, whatever it is. And I'm not talking about people who just follow it by namesake. You know, we can only judge by the apparent. When, mm. you know, and, and the thing is, when, when you... It's, a, it's, it's sad, isn't it? It's sad when people want to force themselves on a community to hold leadership positions when they don't even follow basic. They don't even read namaz. Mm. They don't even read salah. They don't pray. You know, They don't do the basics, absolute basics. Mm. And then they throw a wobbly if you question them on anything. My heart is pure. I know my intentions. Only God can judge me. Yeah. Two pack. This Again. Is, yeah. Very familiar, isn't it? Very familiar. Yeah. Just this, you know, it just keeps come coming back um, to this word in my head is is justice. I, if I do have a grievance with you, mm. I don't expect 
expect, or I shouldn't at least expect, people to condemn you for life. Mm. Even if you're wrong, even if you're right, mm. I don't expect somebody um, to come in and just condemn you forever. Oh, this person is this, and Majid is this, and Majid, you know, I'm never going to give him another chance. Nobody talk to him. Everybody be wary of him. The guy made one mistake. He was on the wrong side of one argument mm. or one situation or one issue. To be fair, before you've even mediated, he might have repented. Yeah, you know, true. And who knows? I mean, you know, people hold grudges about people, uh, on people. They say, oh, I've got dirt on this person. I've got dirt on that person. Who knows, you know, whether they really have or not. First of all, is it based on facts or is it based on hearsay? Is it based on opinion? Is it just something that you've concocted in your mind and believed it? Uh, does somebody just tell you and now you believe it? You know, first of all, if you know these are these are dangerous things to be doing. And mm. secondly, and if somebody has made a mistake, let's just say they made a mistake five, ten, fifteen, twenty years ago, are they even the same person anymore? Mm. There's there's a hadith in there that um, if you see somebody uh, stealing in the night, yeah, in the morning, don't call them a thief. You know, the next day. Mm. Then don't call them a thief because you don't know. You don't know what he went home and what he did, and if he repented and how he resolved it, mm. and you know whether he spent the night in, uh, uh, you know, in repentance and crying for forgiveness and everything. Hold him accountable for that action. Yeah, but don't don't condemn the don't, person. Don't man. tarnish their reputation or relation. This you is know, the thing. They, don't label them for the rest of their lives. Intentions, oh. you know. We don't question intentions. Yeah, Ali. The thing is. If you look around you, and I don't know how many people or counsellors or coaches or, you know, mentors you know. I mean, I know quite a lot in loads of different, you know, disciplines, mm. right? Not one of them have a clean past as far as the public is concerned. Yeah. So they should know that people can change. You know, a good mentor will teach you that there are ways out of your previous life and moving towards positive, yeah. uh, more productive future in the right way. They get people out of crap. Yeah. Bad mentors, counsellors or whatever, self-proclaimed ones, they will punch you down to the ground mm. and if you try and get up, they'll stick their heels on you. Yeah, and then they'll get other people to gang up on you to and gang keep, up you, down, on you. keep yeah. you down. Well, they don't, they've forgotten their own journeys. Mm. They've forgotten the mistakes they made in their previous uh, years, in their lives, in their youth. Yeah. You know, they've forgotten that they've done things just as bad or if not worse. Mm. And people may know about them, but they don't say anything. They've forgiven that because they've overlooked things because you they, they perceive that you may, you know, maybe wanting to make a change in your life. Yeah, absolutely. So when, when a man is down, you don't, trample on them you 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 look for positive ways of helping them and correct them that's when that's when intentions can really be questioned yeah you're not out to help that person of course you're out to annihilate that person and make sure they don't get back up and yeah. make sure everybody knows about it and that's the end of that person that yeah. person in your eyes is done yeah you know and then it's is it from from the bible that let he who is without sin cast the cast first the stone. Cast the first stone. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And we forget all of this. Yeah. Bring it back to intention. Mm. You know, if you mean well, then you mean well for everybody. Yeah. The right, the wronged, um, you know, the wronger, the wrong one, the googly, whatever you want to call it, for everyone. And this is so important. And I think we so easily forget this. Because something that we want to believe, mm. we're convinced like this. You know, we're getting so much beautiful, um, so many beautiful reminders from people and learned learned people on on today's podcast. We we don't have that. We've had a constant good number of viewers today, um, and but the comments have been trickling in. Um, Brother uh, Abid Muhammad, I think that's the name, isn't it? It's uh, yeah, Brother yeah. Abid Muhammad. He said, uh, Hamdan Kathir, uh, Hamd, no, Hamdan Al Qasar, one of the great early Muslims, said, If a friend among your friends errs, make 70 excuses for them. If your hearts are unable to do this, 
then know that the shortcoming is in your own selves. 100%. 100%. What, a, what, a, what, a, what a beautiful saying. You know what? And this, this what does this teach us? It's timeless advice, isn't it? It is, isn't it? it? You can't even say it was a different area, it was a different time, it was a different situation, but that doesn't apply here. It applies everywhere. In yeah. every which context Beautiful, beautiful You know what? I've never met Brother Abid Yeah, I, we were just saying um, this, weren't we? we, we I don't know if I have an I, I don't know I don't know I, I would love to he is. He's a, he's, he's a beautiful person I, the you know, I've his comments, him, Yeah, same here I liked his comments In, in, our, in our normal um, um, posts And uh, they're always uh, very useful And um, very inspiring at times And educational very good. Jazakallah khair, Brother Abid. Thank you very much. Shahana says it's crucial to check the credentials of uh, mental health professionals, especially as those seeking counselling therapy are likely to be in a vulnerable place. Um, supervision is a requirement for counsellors, psychotherapists, so that there is another professional overseeing how the therapist... Sorry, the comments are actually coming, flying through now. They're coming in thick and fast. Uh, yeah, so in 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 um, yeah, so um, as clients may be suicidal, self harming, and so on. Sorry for too many comments. Uh, you know what? Hundred <laughs> percent. As something again, which is overlooked, isn't it? Yeah. Something again, which is overlooked. Which people, when people seek counsel from somebody. They think just because somebody has popu- you know, popularity of some kind or they make mm-hmm. a lot of noise, they're going to know everything. And um, it's a very naive way of looking at things. Uh, Zaf, in, Zaf says intentions are the roots of every action if uh, it reflects the underlying motives of why we plan something or do what we do. Narrated in a hadith, Prophet ﷺ said, actions are judged by intentions, niya, so each man will receive what he has intended for. Uh, this underlines that intention is the ultimate foundation of our actions, hundred percent, and that um, that's particularly relating to from my uh, experience and research when it comes to the acts of ibadah. Um, in social contexts, we judge by the apparent. Mm. We can only judge by the apparent. Um, so you know, again, making the excuses again ties in with that. Um, Cameron says, the bitter truth is we look for net worth in a leader regardless of them being educated or knowing the basics of Islam. <laughs> Shots fired. I have a feeling. Yeah. You know the person, the person may have a dirty background, but he knows everyone on the street. So he's the leader who we place our trust in. Um, yeah, it's true. It's true. Jiski lati uski bas. 100%. As they say, isn't it? Uh, Speaking of bands, me and Cameron were actually discussing. Uh, are you bands? Ben, no. <laughs> no, no, no. It's cows. Cameron. We were discussing oh, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> different kind of bands. <laughs> <laughs> different kind of bands. Right. So we've uh, we've uh, actually slightly run over time, uh, but we were just getting warmed up. I, I get the feeling we were just getting warmed up in uh, in today's podcast. We've had a consistent number of uh, viewers. Um, who have uh, shared some very valuable and important uh, messages. Thank you very much to each and every one of you. Um, it's, it's, we do genuinely appreciate your comments and we, we like to, you know, we don't know everything as much as you might think we do. <laughs> but, but, or how much we might think we do. But, you know, we always learn from these different comments. And who knows who's watching and who's reading these comments, who gets inspired by what you say. And it's not just our mugs and our voices on here, but your comments on here are, are also the things which inspire people. Um, you know, and they and people take things away from that. And you just don't know who you might have helped in what way. Um, so all in all, um, I think we've, uh, we can conclude this particular topic here. Thank you so much for your contributions and, um, inshallah we'll, um, any la- final words, uh, Ali from you? I think we've summed it up pretty nicely. Look, intention is maybe 90% and then justice, intention and justice. Once you have these two things in your heart, um, you, you should be able to, Maneuver around most situations And the, the same thing Don't write anybody off If someone is down If my brother is down I'm down You know If my neighbour is down I'm down If my friend is down I'm down We need to Yeah But when your brother Has done something wrong Then 
you know, we need to get to the bottom of that as well. Oh, but yeah. there are ways of doing it. There are, yeah, absolutely. There are ways of doing it. You don't, <clears throat> you don't, you know, uh, leave them hanging dry in public and give them a, f- uh, a public flogging. Uh, virtually on on social or whatever it is on between your inner circles, you know, because this is how rumors start, and you will not get that opportunity to apologize to that person and retract your statements in front of the same people. You might die tomorrow. Mm-hmm. What are you taking with you? So it, the important thing is, I think there, there are etiquettes when when it comes to the whole all of this. On the one side, you've got to be careful with who you're seeking advice from, whether your your thoughts are manipulated, shaped. Or influenced by somebody else Be conscious of that Whether you, you know And that's both sides of the camp Those who are seeking counsel Those who are counselling uh, And at the same time uh, When somebody uh, has maybe done wrong You know Be just in your dealings With how to, uh, um, how to Yeah 100% it. I think it's the middle ground It is the middle ground Look yeah. the, the point you made about You know your, your brother doing wrong um, Don't overlook it don't ignore it, don't pretend it didn't happen, don't cover for him completely and let him continue to do so. <clears throat> Pull him up on it. Yeah, absolutely. Directly. directly. Face to face. It has to be done. You if know, you care no about way. somebody, then you'll speak to them. You'll speak to them, not about them. Uh, no, this is the difference. Is that don't let it go unchallenged, but also don't be guilty of just slandering or backbiting or malice. The middle ground in this particular scenario, the middle ground is the straight path. Yeah, you know, pull them up, resolve it, guide them, uh, educate them, and maybe learn something yourself along the way. You've, you can then only then and only then say that you've been just to everybody concerned. Mm-hmm. Your intentions were right. You wanted the best thing for everybody, and then you, being the sort of senior or whatever, have said, look. Let's put this matter to bed now. This is it. It's done. It's resolved. We don't need to speak any more of this. And on that note, let's put this episode to bed. Uh, this was episode five of season four, titled "The Things I Do for You." Have a good evening. Have a good night. Inshallah. Until next time. 